In this video we will discuss the electric field. The electric field started out as a way to do calculations easier that involved the electric force, but today we know that the electric field is a real thing with real verifiable properties. In fact, all of modern physics is the study of field theory, and the electromagnetic field theory was the first great success in this area. The electric field symbol is E, and it is a vector, so it has a vector sign over it. By definition, the electric field at any point in space is the electric force that a positive test charge object would experience when it was placed at that location, divided by the charge on the test object. So, at some point in space, first of all, we're going to have to have an origin so we can define where space is. So let's say this is our XY origin and there's some spot out here. And we will claim that there can we can find out if there is an electric field at that spot just as we can find out what the electric field is at any other spot. This is important. The electric field permeates through everything. Like a gravitational force field it is everywhere. Alright? So to find the value at this point we would take some sort of a test charge and we would put it here. And that test charge would have, let's say, charge Q. And we would find that if we put that here, it would then experience a force. And if it experiences force due to the fact it has charge, that is, if you were to put a neutral object there, it might experience other forces like gravity and such, but when you put a charge force, it would experience an additional force, and we could find that, for instance, by subtracting the two. But let's assume we're way out in outer space, and the only force acting on this object is the electric force. And we found that the electric force happened to be pushing this with a force in, say, this direction. Call that F sub E. And we found that force. Then the way that you would find the electric field now is you would make that measurement of Fe and you would divide it so there's Fe that force you would divide it by the charge Q of the test charge that you use to measure the force and this by definition is what we call the electric field now the purpose of the electric field is usually to find this force. So this is experimentally how you would go about this, but the goal is eventually to find methods for finding E and then using E to calculate F. So you could say, or equivalently, the electric force is equal to the charge on an object times the electric field. This is known as the Lorentz force law and it's actually what we usually do. We'll find E, multiply it by the charge, get the force. Divide by the mass, you have the acceleration. If the acceleration is constant, you can use the kinematic equations. We can go and use all the physics of the past. The goal is to find the force and we're going to do that by first finding the electric field. Now some couple of important points here. The electric field is a vector, and since it is a vector, you must give both direction and magnitude. This means you must use vector math. So we're going to be, when you have a vector, for instance, it's going to have some part along the x direction and some part along the y direction, or you might say that that vector had some magnitude at some angle. Alright, so we've got to use vector math and this will mean that we'll often be summing up the components of a group of vectors of electric fields to find the total electric field along X and adding up all the Y components to find the total along Y. And then using trig, for instance, to find the magnitude and the angle. Stuff we've been doing for many, many, many months now. The units. The units of electric field come straight from the definition. We have the units of a force, which are a newton, and then we divide it by a coulomb. However, there's an alternative, and that is a volts per meter. We haven't seen the volt yet. We'll see it shortly. Of course, that just means V over M is usually the way that's written. 
turns out that this one is more common because we're going to find that we use voltmeters a lot to find something called electric potential and we can use that then to find the electric field. This one is useful when we want to go and find forces because it tells us to multiply by charge in coulombs to get newtons. Let's see an example of how this works. Given that you have a uniform electric field of 3 newtons per coulomb in the x direction, what is the electric force experienced by a 2 nanocoulomb charge? So out here in space somewhere at some point, say maybe right there, there is an electric field that's 3, nano, three newtons per coulomb in the x direction. And now they're saying, so if you happen to put a 2 nanocoulomb charge there, what would be the force? This is a very easy problem to work. We simply apply the definition. The charge is 2 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs times 3 newtons per coulomb in the i hat and we get 6 times 10 to the minus 9 newtons in the i hat. If you simply left this as nano, you could have simply written this just as good as 6 nano newtons in the i hat. So it's pushing, accelerating the object in this direction, and the magnitude is 6 nano newtons. Now let's say that we had a different charge, and this will show you why we like electric fields. If we need to calculate a force on another charge, it's really easy if we have the electric field. In part B it says let's take a minus 3 nanocoulomb charge. Alright, so again we just apply the definition. This time we have minus 3.5 nanocoulombs. And we're multiplying that by, make sure I remember what my field was. I believe it was 3 newtons per coulomb. There we go. 3 newtons per coulomb I had. 3 times 3.5, that would be, I believe, 10.5 nano newtons. In the I hat, I'm uh, missing my minus sign. So minus 1.05 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons I have. So we have a bigger force and it's in this case pushing in the opposite direction. Notice the electric field is in this way but because this is a negative charge the force is in the opposite direction. The electric field points in the direction a positive charge, positive charge would experience the force. A negative charge will experience the force in the opposite direction of the electric field. Now this process <coughs> of finding a force by multiplying by a source property, the source property being charge, times the field is not new. We just didn't talk about it previously. We've been doing this for a long time when we were dealing with weight. The weight of an object is equal to its mass, that's the source property, times g, the acceleration due to gravity. So if you happen to have, for instance, a 2 kilogram object here, then the weight we knew was 2 kilograms times minus 9.8 meters per second squared j hat. But remember, this is a newton per kilogram. So we put those two together and we get minus 19.6 newtons j hat. This is the same sort of prize. Here, the source that causes it is mass. In electric field, the source is in fact charge. If you've got this G, it's easy to calculate F. If you've got the electric field, it's easy to calculate F for charges. Now, in the case of G, we didn't worry too much because on Earth, the gravity always pointed the same direction and it always had the same magnitude. That won't be true in electric fields. Electric fields can change directions and they can have different values. They're much more versatile in terms of the type of problems we see. Now, you can have gravity that does it too, but we don't see those type of problems early in this course. And I've given you plenty of notes for you to read more about this idea.
So why did we develop the concept of electric field? Initially, it was just a device. So when doing several electric force calculation, we could reduce our calculation work. In other words, I could quickly calculate the force on different charges if I knew E. In the same way, I could calculate the different weights for different masses that you might put in the gravitational field. But we find the electric field is fundamental. And it is a basic part of modern physics today. It has verifiable properties. It has energy. Even if there's no test charge there, there is energy in the field. Okay? The field can propagate from the sun to you through empty space with no charges there. It is a real thing. So the electric field has taken more of a paramount than just this idea of doing calculations. We have to calculate the electric field for lots of different charge configurations. So it's not going to be something where you can just memorize the number. And these sometimes can be mathematically difficult. In fact, all the great difficulties in our problem of calculating the force are contained in E. All right. And this is true also in gravitation problems if you, for instance, were trying to calculate the acceleration of gravity for some Milky Way galaxy. But we didn't have those type of problems. We always could treat the Earth as a sphere, and we neglected its spinning and other things. We won't be able to do as much of that here because electricity is a paramount in our everyday lives. So we're going to have to learn some new techniques for figuring out how to find E. And one of those is Gauss's Law. Another word is trying to break things into point charges. So that's what we'll do in the next video. We'll show you some ways to attack certain specific types of problems. Most notably, we're going to learn how to attack problems involving point charges. I'll see you on the next video.